right? The darkness cannot overpower the light. The darkness cannot absorb the light. It can't put it out. And also, the darkness is unreceptive to the light. Those people and places and things and behaviors and events that crave the dark cannot also crave the light because it's just not receptive to it. Verse 6, there came a man sent from God whose name was John. Now, this John we're speaking of is John the Baptist, right? Uh, Malachi 3 and 1 also tells you that. This man came to witness that he might testify of the light, that all men might believe in, adhere to, trust it, and rely upon it through him. He was not the light, John the Baptist was not the light himself, but came that he might bear witness regarding the light. The light in uppercase L here because it refers to Jesus the Christ, the Messiah, the Word, the light. There it was, the true light was then coming into the world. The genuine, perfect, steadfast light that illumines every person. He came into the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. The world didn't know him. And just think about that, what it said. The world was made through him, but the world did not recognize him. The world was made through him, but the world did not recognize him. Think about that, parents. He came to that which belonged to him, to his own, his own domain, his own creation, things, and world. He, he, he came to that which belonged to him, and they who were his own did not receive him and did not welcome him. Jesus himself said that the prophet was not welcome in his own hometown. And this is a uh, another scripture that gives testimony, witness to that. Right? We look for more than one witness in the scripture. He came to that which belonged to him. He came to that which belonged to him, his own, his own creation, his own domain, his own things, his own world. And they who were his own did not receive him and did not welcome him. Now, of course, you know that specifically uh, John is speaking here about the Jews at the time who denied that Jesus was the Christ or is the Christ and would not accept him, right, at that time. They would not accept him. They would not receive him. Even though he was Jewish, even though he was Hebrew, you know, in their, born and raised in their area through Mary and Joseph, right? They knew his father and his mother. They knew him to be uh, a fellow Hebrew, a fellow Jew, a fellow Israelite. Uh, they, they did not receive him. They would not welcome him. But to as many as did receive him, amen, and welcome him, he gave the authority, power, right, and privilege to become the children of God, that is, to those who believe in, adhere to, trust in, and rely on his name. You can also see Isaiah 56 and 5. But let me just repeat this. This is John Chapter 1, verse 12. But to many as did receive and welcome him, to those that would receive and welcome him, as many as they were, whoever they were, whatever number they were, right? As many. He gave, Jesus the Christ, the light, the word, gave the authority, power, privilege, and right to become the children of God. Whew. 
Hallelujah. We could stop right there. We could stop right there, but of course you know I won't. <laughs> we could stop right there, but but just let that settle into your spirit. If you receive Jesus, the Messiah, the light, the word, who through all things created everything, who was here before time, hallelujah, you, if you believe, if you receive, if you welcome him, he gives the authority, the power, privilege, and right to you to become the children of God. By no other power, by no other words, by no other means is it necessary except that you receive him and welcome him. He gives you the power, not just the power, but the privilege, not just the privilege, but the right to become children of God. That is to those who believe in, adhere to, trust in and rely on his name who owe their birth neither to bloods nor to the will of the flesh that physical impulse nor to the will of man that are na- that of a natural father but to god they are born of god and the word christ Messiah became flesh, humane and incarnate, and tabernacled. He he fixed his tent of flesh and lived for a little while among us. And we actually saw his glory, his honor, his majesty, such glory as all as an only begotten son receives from his father full of grace favor loving kindness and truth john 1 1 through 14 that is part of the foundation scriptures that we will be looking at the word who and what is the word Then I'd like you to turn to Mark 4, chapter 4, and verse 14. And it simply reads, The sower soweth the word. The sower soweth the word. So we have learned that the word was God and with God and is God. And then Mark 4 and 14 tells us that the sower soweth the word. The sower here is the Father God who's sowing the word, which is also the seed right we know this because john um uh, john oh i'm sorry not john but um luke 8 and 11 tells us that's luke chapter 8 11 tells us the seed is the word of god the seed is the word of God. If the seed is the word of God and the word of God is Jesus the Christ, then the sower soweth the seed, soweth the word. The who oh, glory, hallelujah. The Lord God, the Father God is the sower who sows the seed which is the word. Mercy. So then let us go for another foundational scripture. Genesis chapter 1, verses uh, 1 through 31. Now I won't read all of it verbatim, but I just want to read. In the beginning, God created 
the heaven and the earth. Now we just learned in John 1 that the Word was God, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Before time. Right? So when we see in the beginning God, in the Sefer translation, and also I believe in the Hallelujah uh, translation, it says uh, Yahuwah Elohim, or the Elohim, capital E, the plural God, right? So we can see that God is not just uh, God the Father. We see here now God the Son is included, and we will learn, later read and see right in the scripture that God is also the Spirit. So we'll read. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth, and the earth was without form and void. Without form, and it was void, void, empty, nothingness, right? And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit, there we go, the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And then as you continue to read through to verse uh, 31, or the end of chapter 1, you will see, in verse 3, God said. In verse 5, God called. In verse 6, God said. And in verse 7, God made. In verse 8, God called. And in verse 9, God said. And in verse 10, God called. In verse 11, God said. And in verse 14, God said. And in verse 16, God made. And in verse 17, God set. Established. In verse 20, God said. And in verse 21, God created. And in verse 22, God blessed. In verse 21, God said. And in verse 25, God made. And in verse 26, God said. And in verse 27, God created. And in verse 28, God blessed. And in verse 29, God said. And in verse 31, God saw. So if you were keeping count, said a word, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine times, called, called, you can't call without a word, right? Called forth, one, two, three, At least three times as I count here. Called, called, said, said, and then God made one, two, three, at least three times. And then God created one, two, and then God blessed one, two. All of those requiring his word. God called. God said, so if you imagine God, and you think of the, um, I don't know if you're, any of you are out there are musicians, but you can think of the, um, the, the idea of call and response in music, right? Uh, God, God said, God said, you know, light, right? And then God called and then light and, and it came. So that call, call and response, God called it and, and, and it came. God said it and it came. God created it and it came. God said it and blessed. God said it and it was set. All through the word. The word was sent and the word came back. The word was sent and the word came back. And never did it return void. Because what does the scripture also tells us? That the Lord God's words never return to him void. The Lord's God his words never return to him void. And so we see that this call and response, this rhythm, this pattern was already set before time. And understanding that God is acting outside of time. Time is only for us mere mortals that you know, need to, to have some semblance to our day. But God functions outside of time. If he got, it, that is why in, um, uh, I believe it's 2 Peter, is it 2 Peter 